Hey guys, Mike here. So obviously another red day today, another volatile day. You know, we're kind of used to it. But don't, don't forget, CPI data is coming out at 8.30 tomorrow. So we'll see if the market is just selling us off, you know, in fear of there's going to be really bad numbers. And I mean, according to any prices you see coming up in May, it obviously is going to come in high, I think, either way. So that's kind of what we're looking at for tomorrow. But, you know, one thing that came out today, I noticed, and you're seeing this a lot, and I think you're going to see a lot more of this, is what came out about the consumer, right? The, the, the majority of the population that holds up and supports the economy, which i.e. supports the stock market, right? And there's a lot of fear mongering on, oh my God, look at what the consumer's doing right now. And so I wanted to address that. And I actually want to show you, kind of like, again, pull back the curtain and show you some detail stuff, which actually, when I saw this, because I didn't know it until I looked into it today, was actually good news. And I looked at it and said, oh yeah, we are in much better shape right now, right? And so I'm going to show you that, but then I'm also going to show you what the call and effect is, right? What's causing us to do what we're doing right now? Well, not me. I'm not doing it. And you're probably not either, but a lot of people are. And then I'm going to let you at the end here, hear, hear of a guy who's been right the whole time. I remember when he made this call a year ago and I wish I didn't listen to him. And, you know, right now he's calling for something, which when you see it, you know, you're going to hope, boy, I hope he's hundred percent wrong. Cause if he's right, well, you, you know where we're heading. Okay, and so let's go ahead and get into it and talk about the news of what they're actually talking about, what's coming out today. And of course, this came out today. We was talking about U.S. consumer credit outstanding revolving credit card debt. We hit an all-time new high today. And so, you know, obviously you can see what happens, right? I mean, we ran up coming into 08 a ton, right? And then, of course, when you lose your job, you don't tend to spend as much. So the credit card didn't go up and a lot of people defaulted. So boom, came down, 2020 hits. You see we ran up again and made to stay at home a lot of people defaulted so it went down again and now all of a sudden you know obviously since 2021 ish really uh they've been running up the credit cards applying for credit cards outstanding debt and all that good stuff so that's where we're at right and obviously it doesn't look good um because and i don't know if you follow charlie being lay low hope i pronounced that correctly on twitter but he comes up with some great charts and so borrowed this from him and as you can see pay attention to when you see the year of year change in consumer uh, credit increase, right? So it started around beginning of 2021. Well, of course, he has a chart right here next to it, which does a great job of outlining when we started saving money, which was, of course, the stimulus checks, right? There's the first stimulus check. Then, of course, we spin that up. It goes down. Then we get the second stimulus check in 2020 as well. And then 2021, around the beginning of 2021, we get a, our last stimulus check. And then, of course, that's when you see us spin like crazy. And what happens is we go back to this during that same time frame, you see credit card debt going up and saving rates coming down because there's no more free money coming in and people are spending like crazy because you couldn't spend for almost the whole year. Now, here's the good stuff. I want you to pay attention to this. This just came out in May. So this is the, the freshest data I have. Understand when I say we're in better shape here now than we were or basically have ever been, right? This was when we ran up the mess of the housing market, right? And you can see from 620 to 6, or below 620 in credit scores up to 659 made up a huge amount, right? The people at the top's credit scores made up a very little amount. Now, all of a sudden, look what's going on now. It's a total opposite from 2020 on, right, till today. Look at that. The majority make up have very high credit scores which means they pay their bills have you know past behavior predicts future behavior and then the people with the lowest credit scores make up very little look up auto loans same thing here look at this very little have great credit scores vast majority below 659 and then you come to the right and it's the exact opposite right you see right here a lot of people with very high credit scores, which means they have a good history of paying their bills, which probably means they have a good history of keeping their job and everything like that. And so that's a good thing. And here's the thing. Everything is noise, and I'm going to track this for us every month until this starts to rise. And this is the delinquency status on uh, our debt, right? And so our credit cards, all that stuff. And you can see 30, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 is when it really becomes a huge problem. But you can see right there, right now we're flat. We were decreasing until we got to 2022. And then so it's kind of flat. Some are decreasing, some are increasing slightly. And so, but if you look over to the left, I mean, what do you see over there? When you start to see it build up, where I'm going to put the arrow for you, that's when you know we're going to have a problem. Okay. And so, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, guys, if you get something out of this. As long as people have their jobs, 
you will not see that number dramatically increase. It dramatically increases, that is delinquencies, when people start to lose their jobs, obviously. But here's the kicker. The reason why I showed you about the house and the auto and all that is the fact that right now, 90% of people who own their home, their interest rate on that loan is below the current interest rate, okay? And quite a few are way below that interest rate, and quite a few people have a lot of equity built up in their houses. Okay, so that's something we haven't had in a long time, right? I mean, it, it's at record levels right now. The other thing is, remember, about 66% of people in America actually have a, or own their home, have a mortgage, however you want to call it. About 35% of people rent, okay? So that means the majority do own their home. And so that's a good thing, right? And so that's something we also have. And then you got a lot of people, like I have neighbors have told me, they've taken HELOCs out on. They don't plan on using them unless... Uh, you know, there's a, a huge problem, but they want to go ahead and lock in a lower interest rate on it versus taking it out in the future because they have all this equity in their home and they don't want to sell their home, but they don't want it just sitting there just in case they need it. So it's just sitting there, right? Which is good. Okay. I mean, some of them hundred to $150,000 just sitting there. They don't have to use it, but it's there for emergencies, right? Because things happen like I, you get laid off. Okay. And so the consumer is in good shape, right? Even though the savings rate is going down, there's no doubt about it. Credit cards going up, but let's be honest with you, we, we've seen the credit cards go up year over year over year. That's what we are. We are a debt-ridden society, okay? As long as you can make those minimum payments, which is what a lot of people do. I don't know why, but that's what they do because I understand credit card interest rate right now are really high, even though a lot of people are smart and they get those credit cards where there's no interest for a year or two. You get money back, you know, if you apply for whatever, and they'll transfer the credit cards that have uh, interest on it they'll transfer that debt over to that one have no interest and start trying to you know pay it down and so we're okay as long as people have their jobs okay that, that's the key all right now what is causing people to run up all this debt now and start you know using these lines of credit and things like that well i mean it's pretty simple the main reason obviously is gasoline oil that kind of stuff energy and as you can see this right here is from the U.S. Energy Information Administration, short-term outlook, came out uh, this month. And so as you can see, they haven't been right on point, but they did you know, have it going up, and it shows their projection and stuff. And for those who don't know, we hit a new national average record of $5 a day. I think in some parts of California, it's between 6 and 10 bucks. But you know, if you look right here, they're actually projecting gas and oil to start to decrease either July or August. And I think somebody even said, and Larry Summers said the same thing, about August we should start getting a little bit of relief. And you can see in 2023 where they got their forecast over to the right over here, obviously, you know, components of annual gasoline price changes dropping down. And of course, I think the reason why they're saying after August or during August is because most people go back to, most kids go back to school. We're traveling a whole lot less. We're not going on cruises and airlines and everything else. So maybe the demand is less. We'll see. I don't know because it keeps going up. And so, you know, that brings me to the last part. So that to me, you know, energy and food, the reason why people are putting a lot more on credit cards and then not paying them off at the end of the month. That, that's what's happening, right? You're getting squeezed because the wages definitely are not keeping up with inflation, okay, for the majority of people. And so, you know, that brings me to this gentleman. He's from, uh, I believe, Goldman Sachs, right? He's a commodities guy. That's what he does. So that's why I take, take this with a grain of salt. But the fact is he's been right for quite a while now. All right, and again, I wish I would have listened to him. And I, I remember watching his first interview. It might have been in late 2020, early 2021, uh, that I saw this, and I thought, wow, that's that's interesting. And and I did kind of listen to him. So I, you know, I bought into a copper play and a couple other plays and stuff like that. I made some money on that, which is great. But you know, he's talking about what they call a commodity super cycle. Okay, and this is something you rarely see. But he says, you know, we're basically just in the beginning of it. Jeff, we welcome you here with kind of mixed feelings. You have been right, unfortunately, for consumers. If somebody is looking to buy into the stock market, though, you have been right about where to buy on that, too. Um, energy prices continue to climb. Energy stocks continue to climb. You think there's any end in sight to that trend? We're just beginning. You know, I, I, we like to argue this is that the first innings of a commodity super cycle. It's not just oil and gas. It's metals, mining, it's agriculture, because you know, the sector has suffered from a decade plus of underinvestment. And I want to emphasize, even though Exxon's reaching, you know, a cyclical high right now, the reality is the amount of money in this space is still very, very small. 
um, we haven't seen the rotation. The only money that's really coming in the space is share buyback. So, yeah, you're going to look at pictures that show the rotation of energy up and, you know, tech down. But the reality is we haven't seen a big influx of capital into this space. Um, so, you know, are, are you too late you know, in, in this space? Absolutely not. It's just beginning. Is energy the new leadership then? I mean, we, we are talking about it getting, I think, closer to, to about 5% of the S&P 500. That's up from about 3, 3.5%, but it's still far off the highs where we'd seen it, let's say, 10 or 12, 20 years ago. By, by the way, when you look at the earnings, the revenues and so forth, it's 9% of the S&P. So the fact that you're at five underscores how underinvested the space is, you know, and it's a huge capital misallocation occurring. And again, it's not just energy, it's the entire old economy. Because even if you want to go out and grow shale production, you're out of sand, you're out of pressure pumping capacity, all of these capital heavy industries has suffered from underinvestment, you know, not just for the last couple of years, but in many cases going back a decade and in some cases going all the way back to 08, 09. So, you know, th this is now payback time of, you know, a long period of underinvestment. What's the fastest that we could catch up in terms of what we need to be investing and then in terms of what we need to be producing? Yeah, you know, the problem is we've now entered this volatility trap where the higher the volatility, the less incentive people have to put money to work in this space, which then exacerbates the problem and creates this this vicious um, loop in which it reinforces higher volatility. Um, you know, and so the question is, what's going to stop this? What's going to you know, high high returns can be the one that does this. Um, but at this point right now, they're not high enough to get people to go into the space. You know, when I go out and I survey investors as to why do they not want to put money into this space? Reason number one, a history of poor returns. And, you know, less than two years ago, the losses in this space were nothing short than epic with negative oil prices. Reason number two, the volatility is too high. They don't want to actually contend with, you know, oil prices, you know, just a few months ago were at 98. Then they're at 122, 140, back to 98. I think you get the point. Volatility is high. And then, you know, reason number three is ESG. ESG is actually well below, you know, just the history that the space has. And so I ask, what's going to get capital to come back into space? The answer is a three-year track record within the space. And we're about 18 months into that track record. And so I think you know what I meant when at the beginning I said, if he's right, we're in trouble, right? I mean, that's just the truth. We're, we would be in deep trouble. There's no way we, we sustain all commodities, or a lot of them, just continue to go up and up and up. Because think about EV cars, right? A lot of the stuff he's talking about would affect the EV industry, all right, as far as the batteries and everything else. And so what would they have to do? They'd have to raise their prices, which would discourage a lot of people from switching over because they've been trying to get their prices down. That's been a big mission of theirs, right? Or have to sacrifice, okay, we're going to have to decrease our margins, which would kill their stocks. And so that's a whole another thing. And that's why they say this is the um, retaliation of the old market, whatever you want to say, and because oil stocks, all your grandfather's stocks, right, are making this huge comeback, and all the stocks we love are just going in the toilet, right? And so, you know, the only difference is with this right here, these are cyclical. We know they're cyclical, but, you know, I've never seen a commodity super cycle. He's talking about that's what it is. If that's the case, you know, we, you know where we're heading, you know, but is that going to happen? Who knows? And again, he's the commodities guy. So, of course, I mean, you know, it's one of those things. I don't expect him to say bad things about it, but we'll see. You know, we'll see. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think about the consumers. Is, does that fit you? Does that fit the narrative you think is going on in your bubble? All right, I always say talk to people in your bubble. Everybody's in their own bubble. Okay. And so hit the like and subscribe button if you got anything out of it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's hope we get some, I don't know, good CPI data, right? What do you think? What do you think is going to happen? Make your call down at the bottom. See you later.